Hi, how are you here? Oh wow, a lot happened last year, didn't it? So yesterday morning I was making coffee and I was thinking, you know what? I want to make a video about my top 10 things that happened last year in spaceflight. And notice that's spaceflight, not astronomy. So I'm not going to be talking about the big thing that flew through our solar system and we only noticed when it was on its way out. We're talking spaceflight, that means people and things that are made by people that shoot up into space and go places. So this is my top 10 list of things that happened last year. Top 10 notable things, because not all of them are good. <laughs> so starting off at number 10, rogue satellites. Swarm Technologies was fined a considerable amount of money last month because back in January they kind of accidentally launched some satellites. Their four Space B satellites were sent up, uh, they're basically technology demonstrators. They were sent up on an Indian rocket, but they had already been told not to send them up by the FCC because they were kind of small and too small, too small to track basically. So they were told, hey, make bigger versions of these and send those up. So they did, but they accidentally also launched the small ones. So uh, th that's never happened before. No one's accidentally launched a satellite. Quite understandably, the FCC was like, whoa, partner, I'm gonna stop you from launching for a while. That's that's bad. D don't do that ever again. But uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that was a weird thing that happened, wasn't it? <laughs> Number nine, coming in right at the end of 2018, the Big Falcon rocket test vehicle being constructed. This is now a rocket made of stainless steel, like back in the old days, only I think it's like a high-tech stainless steel. And this is like their Falcon 9 Grasshopper. It'll be a version of their new rocket, Starship, and it'll be doing little tests where it hops up and down to test how good it is at landing and hovering. They're building it down in Brownsville, Texas, and it's, uh, it looks kind of like a water tower, to be honest. They're building it right out in the open, open to the weather and everything, but it's stainless steel, so they can do it. This represents a level of prototyping unseen in the aerospace industry. They are powering ahead with the development of this thing, and only now in the new year have we actually seen engines on this thing, confirming that it is indeed a rocket and not a container designed to hold grain. This test vehicle is uh, destined to pave the way for their much larger vehicle, which will be used to carry passengers between spaceports off the coasts of major cities on Earth and also to send people to Mars. Pretty big deal. Number eight, Boeing and SpaceX showed off their new crew vehicles. Now there's not too much going on here. I mean, they were just vehicles designed to carry humans to space. But this is NASA's commercial crew program. These vehicles were designed over the last few years to carry astronauts to the ISS. Currently astronauts rely on the Soyuz rocket, which we'll get to later, which is launching from the, the Russian space agency uh, over in Kazakhstan. This represents people launching on an actual modern space vehicle, which we, haven't really seen in the West for quite a while. Boeing showed off its vehicle and spacesuit. Uh, theirs is called the CST-100 Starliner, and then SpaceX showed off theirs, which is called the Crew Dragon. Both of them are set to launch their uncrewed demo missions to the ISS in the coming months, SpaceX coming first this month, and then after that, they'll be sending astronauts to the space station on these too. Finally, we have more than one way of getting people up there, which is important, and we'll get to that later. Number seven, the third launch of an orbital booster. There's gonna be a lot of SpaceX in this list. They really are pushing forward the industry right now. In May, SpaceX launched a satellite for Bangladesh, and then in August, they launched the same booster that launched that satellite again. And then in November, for the first time ever, they launched the same rocket three times. Now this is a big deal because so far they've only been able to launch rockets twice, but now they've been able to launch the same rocket three times, and only with the turnaround time of a couple months of refurbishment this time around, they're getting closer and closer to being able to launch rockets like airplanes. This is the major way that they will be able to take launch prices all the way down worldwide, and it's a fantastic technological development, and I'm so happy that they're able to finally start operating the way they want to operate with these things. The plan is that they'll be able to relaunch these things 10 times before inspections and then continue relaunching with them. So they only need to have a few rockets they can continuously operate with. And this year, they plan to actually launch the same rocket twice within 24 hours. Oh boy. That's probably going to be very difficult, but oh, it's going to be so cool. Number six. Five, four, three, ignition. The first successful flight of Rocket Lab's Electron Rocket. Now these guys are awesome. Compared to the other rocket companies which were made by big old experienced aerospace engineers, this looks like a bunch of kids from New Zealand wearing gaming headsets and mission control. Their rocket is the Electron and it's like a mini Falcon 9. It's a little boy and it launches little satellites, but my god is it beautiful. The Electron flew several successful missions this year. Its last mission of the year was launching satellites on behalf of NASA, so that was awesome. And yeah, I can't wait to see where these guys go in the future. They're, they're gonna keep launching these things, they want to get faster and faster at doing it. 
Number 5. The Safe Return of Alexei Ovchinin and Nick Haig. Two astronauts bound to the ISS whose rocket kind of exploded midway. I made a video on this before. Boop. Soyuz MS-10 ended a little bit early before it reached space because they kind of exploded. Basically a sensor on one of the side boosters of the rocket failed and it said, you know what? I, I'm okay with hanging out right here. I don't want to move away from the rocket. I'll just stay right next to it. And it kind of moved back and slammed into the rocket and everything exploded. All the abort procedures were followed automatically. A part with the crew separated and shot off to the side. They went up a little bit and came back down and landed safely. Actually landed very close to where they would normally land coming down from the ISS. So short mission, granted, only a few minutes long, but safe. And they came back unharmed and that was the good part. And they're gonna fly back again early this year. Number four. That's one. Four. Yes. Dear Moon. This was an announcement between SpaceX and Japanese billionaire Yusaka Mezawa, and he seems like a really wholesome guy. The idea is the Starship rocket, which was then named Big Hecking Rocket, or BFR, will take a bunch of people around the moon as kind of like a fun trip. But the difference here is that this is really an art project funded by this guy called Yusaka, and this art project involves taking a bunch of the world's most famous artists Sort of 12 around that many, maybe more. And we're talking about like movie producers or musicians or painters, those kinds of people. You know, people, people whose names you would recognize, though I don't think any names have been released yet. It's about taking them on a mission around the moon and back to Earth just to really see what comes off of that. What kind of inspiration being around another world really gives you. And when you have that much creative ability, how is that going to affect society? How is that going to affect people? Now, they will probably have internet around the moon when they do this. So that'll be interesting getting social media posts from around the moon. All in all, a really interesting idea and a great excuse to get people around the moon, basically. A lot of people I find are really skeptical about space flight and about how when people start paying to go to space, it'll just be the ultra rich, right? But that isn't the case. That's not how you get the best development. That's not actually how you make the most money. You could be a company like Virgin Galactic, which is like, hey, pay us quarter million dollars, we'll get you into space for five minutes. Or you could be, hey, I want to take on the airline industry. How do I do that? They're two very different things. Number three, Parker Solar Probe. I made a video on this one too. Bloop. Hello. This boy is on his way now and he's hauling butt toward the sun. A few months ago it actually reached the fastest object ever made by people and uh, it's gonna get really close to the sun but it seems to have survived, it's doing well and I can't wait for the results from this thing. One could say it will become a very spicy boy. <laughs> Number two, the InSight Mars Lander. Now hi, Mars is cool but why is this particular Mars Lander cool? It has a seismometer which is like a heartbeat detector but for planets. If Mars is still geologically active this guy's gonna find out. It's at number two because just because I really love watching the live stream with JPL the Jet Propulsion Laboratory when these things are landing themselves. At JPL Mission Control they were uh, having quite the celebration when that thing touched down and my gosh that is the best handshake I have ever seen. Much better than the last time. And now, number one. Well, of course it's Falcon Heavy. That thing is a monster. This beast of a rocket wasn't even meant to make it to space. It was probably just gonna explode on the way, but it did it somehow. So for people who hadn't followed the development of this rocket, it was almost canceled several times. By the time that they were actually gonna start making it, their smaller rocket, the Falcon 9, had already grown to be more powerful than the original design. But to lob stuff at other planets, especially big stuff, you need a very powerful rocket. So it's a big deal that this has been developed. Plus, it has 27 engines at the bottom. The last time something with that many engines went up, it came straight back down. Got on you guys SpaceX, way to put on a show and look at that view. That, that is an image people are gonna remember for forever. That is... <laughs> Thank you so much for supporting me this year. Next year, next year? No wait, supporting me last year. This year is gonna be amazing. This year is gonna be really cool. I can't wait to cover all this stuff. Anyway, it's the morning. Why am I, why am I here? I need to go to work. If you want to support me, simple things like you can hit subscribe and that way I know you wanna see more of this stuff. And you know what the bell thing does. That means that you can actually see my videos when they come out, otherwise YouTube will just bury them. And additionally, if you wanna see more of the smaller new stuff that I don't cover on the YouTube, I have a Twitter account too that I've linked down below. And I also have a Patreon, and you can see my wonderful patrons in the end screen here. I hope you had a great new year. I'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>